How about now? Everybody can hear me? Yes, there we go. Today is truly a day that the Lord has made. It's a beautiful day for Memorial Day. Amen. If today doesn't move your soul during these ceremonies or a tear does not come to your eye at any one point, I will be blunt. You are not an American. <laughs> This morning, I am truly humbled to even be up here on such a day. I am truly humbled to introduce this individual to you for his service, his willingness to sacrifice. And being here today for those that gave the ultimate sacrifice is truly humbling in itself. Thomas K. Eagles is the Chief Executive Officer of Hemispherics Biopharma Incorporated. Equals received his Juris Doctorate with high honors from Florida State University. He is also a summa cum laude graduate of Troy University and also was awarded a master's degree from Troy. Equals, I've gotten through the big words, so. But truly what brings him worthy of standing before you to give you what his words of today as he was a Chief Warrants Officer too, in the United States Army as a helicopter pilot. He's a highly decorated combat aviator, twice awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross and awarded the Purple Heart, the Bronze Star, and 15 Air Medals. and including three for extraordinary valor. And probably one of the coolest things, in 2012, he was knighted by Pope Benedict as a Knight of the Papal States. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Equals to talk to you today. Thank you, Sheriff Woods. Thank you very much for your three decades protecting and serving our community and making Marion County a place where we all feel south, safe, and secure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I too am humbled to be here today. And I want to thank you for coming and standing with us and honoring all those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice in service to this great nation. I see many of you are here with your families. I'm here with my family today too, my wife Laura, my children, Christina, Mary, Josh, Ethan, my nephew Sean and his wife Colleen, and their little babies. In a very important way, this day is all about family. America is a tapestry, a tapestry woven of millions of families in thousands of communities from every state, from every racial and ethnic background. We honor those who died, not for some vague political concept. They died for us. They died in service to our great nation. They died in service to their families and our families. I'm so grateful that my family's here today. Many that I served with in Vietnam did not return. Never had a chance to have a family. So when I look at them, in a way, I remember how grateful we must all be for their service and sacrifice. Now, I would like to recognize all those combat veterans who are with us today, all those who have been wounded in combat or who are currently serving. Would you all stand up for just a moment? Thank you very much for your service. And 
And now I want to especially recognize, and this may be hard for some of you, but I want to especially recognize those who have lost a loved one or a family member in combat, in service to our country. If you'd stand up for a moment, I'd appreciate it. We here today, we here today are humbled by your family's sacrifice. We commend your courage and your strength, for you have had to endure the most difficult of times. Now today is about remembering and honoring the more than one million men and women who have died in wartime over the span of our nation's history. This does not take into account those who were wounded or who were missing. It does not count those veterans who have died from related causes like Agent Orange or other combat-related afflictions. That number is actually closer to 5 million. Now these numbers should truly humble us as they represent people individuals, sisters and brothers, wives and husbands, mothers and fathers, who were parts of a family, just like your family and my family. Now for those of us who served in combat, we had a loss too. For these were our friends, our comrades in arms, best friends, buddies, who in some instances laid down their lives so that we could live on. As combat veterans, our loss is not abstract, for we were there. We were witness to their heroism. For some of us, we were there when they died in our arms. And back home, each one of those lost was woven into the fabric of their own families and their own communities all across this nation. They were loved, they were mourned, and they are missed. I was asked to speak today because of a painting I did called Lest We Forget. There's a print of it right over here which will be uh, ultimately hanging in the gallery here at Veterans Park. I have to thank my daughter Christina and daughter Mary and son-in-law Josh because they helped me to convert it into a graphic print which we could share with other people. Now this uh, painting is, is about a friend of mine, Mickey Wilson. That's what inspired me to paint it. Mickey was MIA for 30 years. His helicopter simply disappeared in early January 1973 in the northern part of South Vietnam. It was almost 30 years before his body was recovered, three decades. Now I remember when Mickey and I were student pilots together and became friends. We went through flight school together. We went to Vietnam together in January of 1972. His helicopter was hit by a surface-to-air missile. The entire crew was lost in a catastrophic explosion. But the mystery of his MIA was only answered decades later, when the crash site was found. I found out what happened to Mickey purely by chance. I was reading the Orlando Sentinel, and it talked about a crash site being found and a crew of helicopter uh, of the helicopter being recovered. One of the members on the crew was from Orlando. But as soon as I read it, I knew we were talking about Mickey, my friend Mickey Wilson. And the funeral was scheduled for Arlington, so I got on a plane and went to the funeral. Yet after 30 years at that funeral, there was only me, another buddy from Vietnam, and his two elderly parents in attendance. His two elderly parents, they were crushed. He was their only son. Think about it. Mickey was a 22-year-old, affable, easygoing, funny guy. He was a friend to everyone. 
He had many friends as a child, as a student in high school, as a student pilot in flight school, and as a combat aviator in Vietnam. Yet, due to the passage of time, none of his friends even knew. There was barely anyone there to remember. So that's why I named this painting that you see over here, Lest We Forget. And that is why we are here today. We are here today to remember and to honor with our remembrance all those who have given their lives in the service to our great country. Amen. Now, even though at the age of 19 I went off to war, and even though I flew 300 combat missions, I cannot begin to comprehend the moment when you send your loved one off to war, you watch them disappear out of your line of sight, knowing it may very well be the last time you ever see them. You hug your son and daughter as they go. You tell them that you love them. But as they kiss you goodbye and you watch them get on an airplane, again, you may never see them. This has been something that families in this country have had to endure. My mother went through that experience as I left for Vietnam. My nephew, Sean, who's here today. Sean, stand up for a second with Colleen. My nephew, Sean, was an infantry captain in Afghanistan. His wife, Colleen, had to watch him deploy, had to watch him get, get on an airplane, not knowing if he would come home again. I remember when I was 19, my daughter was a baby and she could barely talk, but she wanted to know when I was coming home. And I had to tell her, honey, I don't know. This is a tough, tough thing that families in America go through as a part of our service. Now, I wanna take a moment to read a letter from a letter that my mother sent to me one Memorial Day. This was after I returned from Vietnam. And she loved to write me these notes. This is back before email when people actually took a pen and put things on a piece of paper. I jokingly called them mummygrams and I would give anything to get one again from her. She said, the year you spent in Vietnam was definitely the worst year of my life. I watched the news, saw the battles, and I never knew from day to day if some soldier would show up at my door, a messenger with bad news. When you came back, I got down on my knees and thanked God for bringing you home. But I knew I was one of the lucky mothers, and some were not. So I spend some time each Memorial Day praying for those who sacrificed their lives for our freedoms and for their families who have an empty place at their table and a hole torn in their heart. Son, she said, I am very proud of you. You have many ancestors who served in virtually all of our wars, but you stood up and served in Vietnam when so many refused. So even though that year you were in Vietnam gave me gray hair, she always blamed her gray hair on me and was the worst year of my life, the day you came home, was the best day of my life. Now, like I said, thank you, Mark. Like I said, it is almost impossible to comprehend that moment when the ever-present underlying fear that every family has becomes a terrible, grim reality the email, the middle of the night phone call, or the military chaplain standing at the front door of the next of kin to tell them their loved one has been killed. It is all too easy for those who have suffered, never suffered such losses, to see past the holes that were left in the families and communities of those who were lost. It's simply human nature. One of our great presidents, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, one said, those who have long enjoyed such privileges as we enjoy 
forget in time that men have died to win them. But Memorial Day is a chance to reconnect to this genesis of our nation's blessings and freedoms. It is an important day on which we ground ourselves to the reality that our way of life has been shaped and made possible by those who have served and by those especially who were lost. So I hope you will keep our military men and women and the sacrifices that they have made close to your hearts today and throughout the rest of the year. We in this country owe a great debt of gratitude to those who have sacrificed their lives so that we can live free. And we repay that debt, not in coin, not in gold, but by remembering, by not forgetting what they did and what they stood for. Now, as Sheriff Woods was so kind to say, I, I'm a, a Juris Doctorate from FSU. Now that means I'm a lawyer. And as a lawyer, I'm schooled in the Constitution. But I, I'm also a great believer in our Constitution and the rights it confers and in our democracy. I sincerely believe that the lawyer, the demonstrator, the news reporter all play an important and extremely essential part in any vibrant democracy. Even when we disagree with their position, the role is important. However, I acknowledge, and I think we all must agree, that their roles all exist and function from the sacrifice of our soldiers, sailors, and Marines. A little out of control here. Um, oh, thank you very much. Now, we come here today, all of us growing up in a land where we have many freedoms. But let's think back to when this country started. In America, we were once oppressed by the cruel and brutal tyranny of an English king. We had no rights whatsoever. We had no freedoms. Our forebearers fought and died to carve out these fundamental freedoms which are etched by blood and fire into our very constitution. I'd ask that you listen to these poetic words of a gentleman, Charles Province. It is not, excuse me, it is the soldier, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It is the soldier, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the campus organizer, who has given us the freedom to demonstrate. It is the soldier, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to a fair trial. And it is the soldier, the soldier who salutes this flag, the soldier who serves this flag and the soldier whose coffin is draped by this flag who allows protesters to burn that very flag. That's what America is all about. We serve to keep this country free, free for all. Our nation owes a great debt of gratitude to its fallen heroes. America rests on the foundations laid by those who served and sacrificed. They have given their lives for something bigger than their self. They sacrificed it for the ideal of America, a shining beacon of liberty and justice for all. It is a debt that can never be repaid. But as I said, it's a debt that must be honored and remembered. 
I'd like to paraphrase what one of our great presidents once said, President Ronald Reagan. He said, I can't claim to know the words of all the national anthems in the world, but I know of no other that ends with a question and a challenge such as ours. Does that flag still wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave? And he asked, that is what we must all ask. Why? Because freedom is never more than a generation away from extinction. We do not pass freedom on to our children in the bloodstream like some genetic gift. It is earned. It must be fought for. It must be protected. It must be handed on generation by generation. Now, as a boy, my mother told me tales of family heroes. Over the years, I learned from her and others in our family about those who served in the Revolutionary War, the Mortimer brothers, farmers from East Brady, Pennsylvania. Got a little wind going here. William Equals from the wild coast of Beaufort, North Carolina. Yeah, I have to I have to leave when I get done because I'm giving the same speech in Sumter County down in the villages, so I can't lose it. <laughs> and then I learned of another William Equals, also from North Carolina, who fought for the South. And my great great grandfather, Sergeant John McCullough, who fought for the North, a Pennsylvania Civil War hero. He was wounded three times in three different battles as a mounted courier. When I grew up. I got to know all of my relatives who, who served in World War II. I was of an age, they had come home and they were making their living. Master Sergeant William Asa Equals, who fought in the Battle of the Bulge. Paul Mortimer, Staff Sergeant Paul Mortimer, who was in the infantry in almost every major battle across Europe. My great uncle Martin McCullough, who served in the Navy initially and then with the OSS in Germany. My great uncle, Staff Sergeant Dale Montgomery, who was severely wounded, shot in the eye, bullet came out the back of his head. He lived for about 15 years, but he died as a result of World War II. And finally, my uncle Jack, and he was my favorite because he was, would tell us tales, but he was a tank commander with uh, Patton's Third Armored Division. Now, they all played a part in winning World War II and the peace that followed. Without them, the liberties we enjoy today may not have been available to us. They left their homes, they sacrificed, and millions upon millions served, and hundreds of thousands died. So much of what I think about patriotism, about duty and honor and country, is based on these examples from my family. And in a way, my brother, a Navy commander, and I became examples from our generation. And for this generation, my nephew, Sean, serving in Afghanistan. So as Ronald Reagan said, we must remember that freedom is passed down by sacrifice generation by generation. And let's remember that with our service. Because every time we hear on the radio and watch TV or read the news, Every time we see people in other lands that are oppressed and terrorized, we are reminded that the life we live in America is truly blessed. And we should never forget that this tree of liberty, whose shade gives us all a blessed repose, has flourished because it is fertilized by the brave service of our combat veterans and the blood of those patriots who sacrificed their lives so that we might live free. So now for the millions who have fallen in service to liberty, for those who have died in the protection of our freedoms, and for those who have sacrificed, giving it all for the preservation of America, I ask you all to stand now, if you would please. Place your hand over your heart. 
And let us now honor the silent assembly of our dead. Let us pray that on this day and every day hereafter, that those who have been lost may be forever embraced by America's love. Let us pray that their heroic sacrifice is never lost or forgotten and let it reverberate forever in the American consciousness. And let us pray that those who have died for us will forever be embraced by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, I passed out at the beginning the lyrics for God Bless America. And when I was a little boy, we learned this song in school. Everybody know the song? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, there's two ways to sing it. Uh, God Bless America, Land That I Love. But we're going to sing this together. God Bless America, Land That We Love. Let me read the lyrics to you one time. And then we're going to sing this so that those that are with the angels in heaven will hear our hymn of praise in their honor. The lyrics go like this. God bless America, land that we love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, our home sweet home. God bless America, our home sweet home. Now, if you'll join with me now in singing. God bless America, land that we love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, our home, sweet home. God bless America, our home, sweet home. Thank you very much.